Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this next Corvette video, we're going to fix the driver's side floor pan because I fixed the passenger side in the last video. So we're going to replicate that on this side with a much smaller repair because the crack's not nearly as big. So we should be good to go. I'm just going to get started uh, grinding. Alright guys, this side came out really good. So the first thing I did was um, kind of ground it really good and I got behind the panel because I think this broke at a point where two panels are glued together so what I did was kinda tried to grind around the panel and pry it out a little bit so I could get a bunch of glue behind it so I squirted a bunch of glue behind it and then I used this uh, I wish I could have got more in there but I got as much as I could and then I used this clamp here to push from the tranny tunnel over here onto that actual dead pedal area and push it into the corner so it would ooze the glue out and then I went over top of it with a bunch of this uh, bunch of this epoxy for SMC and this is like some old expired stuff that I got so hopefully it works um, I was just given to me for free and I'm looking at it I'm like this stuff's really old <laughs> it says 2012 on it so I don't know it's been like 10 years so hopefully it still works uh, it's expired probably a long time ago but Whatever. The other stuff expired in 19, but that stuff seemed to harden up. This stuff's taken a long time to harden, even though it has the same work time. So it's also way colder, but uh, I don't know. That definitely plays a huge role, the heat. It's going to catalyze way slower in the cold temps. So if you're <laughs> unsure of this, don't do it on a hot day, because um, you'll have much more time. This side was way better for me to work with than the other side. I do think it will harden eventually, so well, I'm just going to leave it clamped probably like indefinitely um, today probably all day into tomorrow and I'm gonna go start working on the other side over there and uh, I got some um, different sound deadening materials I'm gonna talk to you guys about and uh, from a company called uh, sound skins and uh, they make some nice stuff and so we're gonna basically put it on the large flat areas um, first so like these big areas here are gonna resonate a lot and these large areas here too you can hear the vibration in the panel and once we put the sound deadener material on there it's like a butyl rubber with some uh, layers uh, just to it'll deaden it, it increases the weight of the car slightly but it, it's nice overall for a good experience and the car's not going to drone and rattle and, and resonate as much so it should be a better driving experience for you and it is a Corvette so we're going to try to do that um, so I'll put that down and I'll put down this other uh, product called Heat Wave, which should be a nice noise barrier as well. Um, so we'll have the noise barrier and we'll have the dampening going on. And uh, both of those things should help us out tremendously um, for ride quality in this car. So that's what we're working with and we're going to get started. Um, so I'm going to go get some of that uh, Damplifier Pro is what it's called. And I'm going to put that down on these large areas. So first things first, I got to clean up. I've done a lot of grinding in here, and so I think I'm going to try to just blow this side out, and then we'll uh, come in here and clean it with some alcohol, denitrate alcohol, and that way everything will stick really good, and we can start applying our sound deadener to some of the larger areas that I know we're going to need it, uh, probably over over this stuff here. Um, not entirely. Um, I might leave some of this, but I'll probably put a piece here and a piece here just to span these gaps. I have a nice roller for it that I'll show you guys. Alright guys, so here is where I'm at. I mixed up a little more epoxy afterwards. I don't know if I showed, I think I showed the floor patched up. I took the clamp off. I said I wasn't going to, but then this stuff got hard, guys. It, it really did do what it was supposed to do. Um, it's hard. Honestly, I like this side better than the other side. And I uh, put some epoxy in a little hole that I had over here. And it seemed like it filled it in nicely. So, this stuff is honestly awesome. It's better than the other side. It's, it honestly feels better. Just the way that I repaired it, I clamped it on there. I think that was ideal. So you can see um, back there, it's all resealed, honestly. The panel is reattached. So I'm excited. We got both floor pans fixed. Big progress today. And I got all the sound deadening on. So this is the SoundSkin Damplifier Pro. So I just kind of tried to put it on the larger areas. I know these things are known for rattles. So I think it's mostly the plastic pieces in the car that rattle. <laughs> so I'm sure that's what's going to rattle. But if you can dampen 
um, the resonance in the panels, maybe they'll keep some of the plastic pieces from rattling since they're all bolted to these panels that are doing the, the vibrating. Um, I don't know, and maybe it won't help, but I just added a bunch of weight. So, whatever. It is what it is. I probably, you know, I'm going to add like 20 pounds of deadening. Uh, but I did take out some stuff too. Um, the jute and whatnot, so it is what it is. We're just gonna put it on the larger areas. I have some other stuff. I ran out of the Amplifier Pro, so I'm gonna start using some of the regular foil stuff that I've had um, sitting around. Uh, you know, I could save it for another sound system project, but I know that I can work with uh, SoundScan in the future and get some new uh, products here from SoundSkins. So, yeah, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and save the rear for later. I want to focus on getting the dash put back in now that I have everything that I need. So I'm going to start making this firewall blanket. So I'm just trying to devise how I want to do it. I think I want to do like uh, multiple sections and then tape them together with the uh, aluminum tape. So I have to get a roll of aluminum tape and then tape it together. And that way I can keep it nice and soundproof from the engine bay and over the transmission tunnel as well. So I'm just going to work on that. Uh, for the time being, uh, a lot of measuring, measuring multiple times, trying to get it right because I want it to come out nicely. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what I have to do to make that happen. So I can't say enough about this product here, this sound skin stuff. Heat Wave it's called. Really awesome. I haven't even gone through that much of it. It's, it's covering pretty well as far as what I need to do. Um, Basically, I've just been cutting out sections and using adhesive spray to tack it down. You spray both sides, you know, the side you're going to apply it to on the heat wave. And then you spray the firewall as well. And I plan to come back with aluminum tape like this and hit the whole thing and seal up all the gaps that I have. Because I've just been kind of piecing it together, but I have a little section cut out for the heater box and... Hopefully everything fits in here still. So I'm trying to do down low over there. That's my next phase. And then I'll put the wires back down and put the dash back in. I'm pretty happy with it overall though. I think it looks good. So I'm just gonna proceed with this process here. And uh, just keep on going. Try to get the dash section knocked out first and then I'll jump onto the trans tunnel because that's you know, I can always work on that at a later date if I run out, but I don't think I'm going to run out. I think I'll have enough to do this in the trans tunnel, which is my main concern. It would be nice to do the floor as well, but just don't think we're going to have enough. So we can either use something else or buy some more. So we'll see what we end up doing. But yeah, we're coming along, guys. It's looking really nice. You can't cut it with a razor knife. It's just so darn... The foil is just so tough. It's awesome. It's, it's like what you want. Um, it's a really durable material to use. So I end up using these shears that I have to cut it. These big guys and they work pretty well for that even though you know they still bind up a little bit. If they were newer they'd probably cut it okay but they're doing pretty well. Um, I've got a large section covered. I have pretty much all underneath here covered up and that's my D-cube turning off but uh, I got the floor in the front area, anywhere firewall related where there's going to be heat, I have wrapped and trans tunnel where the trans is going to make noise. So that was the factory wrap, that's where it was. So we're going to just mimic that um, up here and on the trans tunnel. So hopefully this sounds uh, better than factory, I would think uh, it should do a better job. So I'm going to go through and just use uh, aluminum tape uh, anywhere where we have gaps in the, uh, in the material and in the heat wave so we're just going to carry on here doing the whole trans tunnel I'm sort of branching out going back and forth I got a lot of areas done on the other side I'll show you guys so I kind of did over here as well covered up a lot of our repairs here but under the gas pedal I'm trying to leave an area for the column to mount but I did get it to go all the way up on the side and on the top. I'm really trying to cover as much firewall surface area as I can feasibly get to. I can't really get to some of the stuff in here, so I'll just do my best. And uh, anything's gonna be better than nothing. So it's definitely good to put something in there where otherwise we would have nothing. So yeah, we'll, we'll get it done as good as we can, get it taped up, 
and hopefully everything's nice and quiet in here and I'm pretty much ready to start installing the heater box once I run out of um, tape and patience with the foil I think I'm gonna start trying to put in the box and start reassembling this thing because we're pretty much there so I'm happy with the way this is all coming out it's really nice it looks really legit even though I'm just kind of winging it but it looks good so this is the new heater core I picked up because the other one was clearly leaking out of this area up here where the weld was so I don't know if they had it fixed or what the heck they did but I mean you can access this thing from in here so they faded the heater case off um, I don't know they they must have just sealed the heater case I don't know why <laughs> I'm not gonna seal it because it, it's not supposed to be sealed with our TV so I'm not doing that I'm just gonna put the heater box in there and put it together shouldn't have any problems now with the new heater core not leaking so I've got um, I know it's a little bit dark in here, the camera's got to adjust, but I got the heater box in. I can take this tape off of the, uh, shield now, I guess. So, done spraying adhesive spray in here. That came off nicely. So yeah, I got the heater box in here, and all my stuff is all taped on this side. So we got the, uh, box. I'm going to throw the heater core in now. And I won't connect the lines on the outside, but I'll just, uh, I think there was a couple of um, brackets for it. So I'm just going through now and trying to find all the correct screws to use for everything because that guy that commented, as much as I hate to admit it, he was right. <laughs> I, I said, I just threw all those screws in the pile, I'll figure it out later. And he's like, that'll be a fun game. And I was like, you know what? All right, guys, so here's another update. The smoke from the wildfires in Canada are, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I got some of my newspaper down there taking a taking flight. But uh, yeah, I really can't see, it's all foggy in the distance, very weird. Um, yeah, anyway, so we've done a little bit. We are on the up and up, guys. We're going back together. So this is exciting for me. Um, yeah, just piece by piece, trying to just make sure I cover all the bases and uh, put it back together as slowly as possible so I don't forget anything and uh, just double checking that everything is clean as it goes back together so I got uh, the actual box with all the doors in there and I have the heater core installed along with this other box I'm working on getting the screws in from the outside now um, yeah I still got to tape stuff up and I still have to figure out where all the harnesses go but I'm using my previous video as a guide and it's been working out for me to help me see what goes where because you know I don't remember. I should have taken more pictures and I should have put all the screws and baggies and blah 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 but I'm not good at that. I just rip stuff apart. It always goes back together. I have not learned my lesson yet. I don't know why I do these things to myself but I'll figure it out eventually like I always say. But we got progress I'm happy with that so we're gonna move on now to uh, I did change the fuel filter which was super easy to get to right here so yeah, I had a 5 8 flare wrench on here and 11 16 I think on there and I just busted it loose top and bottom I did not put the bracket back on because it just kind of sits nice right here you have to tweak the lines a little bit to get it to line up but it works good and uh, the fuel that came out of there was pretty nasty so I'm almost thinking about pulling the sending unit out and sucking the gas out of the tank just so we get all the bad gas out of there put some fresh stuff in um, won't hurt so right now I have this box is held in so we're kinda just going back together I wanted to do that while it was easy and now I'm putting this back on just you know figuring it out as I go here um, I'm trying to get this screw in here that I cut this access hole for once I do that I can epoxy something over top of that so we close off that hole there I don't want any leakage because that's right where the exhaust is. But uh, I have to figure out how to get that bolt started because I really would like it to be clamped nicely there. I have a nut and bolt here and there's another screw here, but it would be nice to get that corner to seal. So I'm going to try to devise a way to get at, uh, get at that and get it in there. I got these two in that hold the box and they pulled nice and tight against the jute on the inside. So that's going to be our in interior seal and the exterior seal is still intact, it's kind of in pieces. Um, I may attempt to put a little something RTV or something just to make sure we get a good seal. And the heater core out you see is run out. So yeah, we're getting there. 
I want to clean inside of here, blower motor area. I didn't do that yet. So I'm just going to do a quick little clean in there. And we'll keep on going with this thing. So, slowly but surely, we're putting it back together. So, we are now testing the doors, the HVAC doors, just because I want to make sure that there's nothing broken while I'm here. I know I already started putting it back together, but this is now a good time to turn around and rip it all back apart if we have a problem. So what I'm doing to test it is I have this little vacuum gauge, Mighty Vac. It is pretty old and it's pretty busted. <laughs> but it's not the gauge that's important, it's the fact that it makes vacuum. So when you pump this thing, it's gonna create a vacuum through the hose and I have it hooked up to the vacuum diaphragm for the defroster. So when I pump this, you should see, uh, as long as I have this thing spun the right way, when I pump this, you should see this guy open up and then I'll release it and the door comes back. So I'll show you again. This is the door. Pumping it and then I release it and the door comes back. So you can do that for all of the doors and check all of them. Make sure that they work before we hook it back up. So now I know no doors are binding, and I also know that the vacuum diaphragms are working. That way, if we do have a problem, God forbid, if a door doesn't switch or something like that, uh, I'd look towards the control head, most likely. It could be this module up here, this vacuum module that I already rebolted. Um, that wasn't even bolted when I got the car. It was just lying up loose in there. So now we're nice and bolted. We found its correct home. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. I feel like I'm going to put this car back together better than it was before. Find all the right spot for everything. And uh, yeah, it's going good. It's going back together nicely. So now I know all these uh, doors work. I can put all my HVAC lines back on with all their little locks. And we'll proceed to the next step. So I'm waiting on maybe bringing some tools home for tomorrow to get the, the exterior HVAC box on there. Just because of that one bolt. That's just terrible. It's so hard to get to. But we'll get that at a later date. So I'm just going to do something while I can, try to stay productive, and keep picking away. Pretty soon I think the um, the dash piece is going to go in, the big, big plastic dash piece. And then once the carrier is in, I can start, you know, organizing wires and seeing where all that's going to go. Because we're pretty close. So I'm just going to, yeah, keep plugging along. So remember that difficult bolt? No, you're going to be in it. I got Pops helping me here. I'm able to tape it in this ratchet here. Oh. And it's held into the ratchet pretty nicely. So now we're gonna try to do this, this thing here where I stick it in there and then he's gonna push on it with something, hopefully something long or push with the I don't even know what's going to happen. We're, we're going to see if we can get this in there because it's so hard to get through the jute now. That's the biggest problem here. And you see our little hole in there through our access door. And then we got to epoxy something on top of that little thing I made. And I thought about maybe using some screws. So I'll show you guys what I ended up doing for my little reverse hack job here. But we got to hack it back together too. So that's just how it goes. So I got all the difficult bolts all started and tightened on this box. Thankfully, I still have a couple more tricky ones underneath. I was thinking about either doing like a nut and bolt combo through there or something of that nature. Got to make sure our seals are good. I went ahead and put a little bit of tape on there and just kind of cut the jute just in case any water drips out of the condenser. I didn't want it to get the jute wet there because it's kind of at that dividing point between the interior and the exterior here. Um, and I put my little patch in there, which I used silicone to seal. I think it went pretty nice. I tried to seal it as well as I could. Um, there's a little gap I couldn't get to in the bottom corner, but I don't think we're going to have any problems down there. Um, should be fine. So I put a nice bead around it. Should be sealed once that silicone dries, so I'll give that time to dry. And I'll be putting the uh, evaporator core in there tomorrow, probably. And... Yeah, getting one step further. So I got really far tonight on the outside with all these stubborn bolts. So that gives me some confidence to go into tomorrow knowing that, uh, you know, we can proceed without any 
issues. We we had all the issues already out of our way. So I ended up using LS parts and an LT1, which all I did was cut the plastic off of the in engine cover, and that's what I used, but I guess we do have LS parts in here now, technically. But yeah, that's how much I love LS engines. I gotta use them in my LT1. But yeah, that's a wrap for tonight, guys. I'm going in. So it's another night, and I got the heater box on. I got the AC condenser is in. Not fully hooked up yet. I'm gonna wait until I get the uh, jug back on there. I uh, gotta put the blower motor on. I'm gonna look for a gasket. I might just get some felt and make my own gasket. I thought I had it, and I just can't find it. I don't know what happened to it. It's gotta be somewhere in my mess. Don't look at it. I'm sorry. It's gross. Um, yeah. So I will look for the gasket and. I got some other things I can work on. I put the vents in for now, and we're getting there, guys. I can put on the uh, case on the inside. I think I can put that on. I guess the vents are kind of in the way now, so I may pop that back off, throw on that guy there, and then the airbag can go back in. Just some other interior things like that. And then I'm, I'm waiting on doing the IP carrier, um, instrument panel carrier is this. This guy over here, I got my iron heating up here. It's like melting some goo here. I don't know what's coming off of it. It's gross. I don't know what's, what that is. Um, but I'm heating up my plastic welder. I'm going to try to reapply these pieces. Because this was broken prior to me, guys. And these pieces do kind of have a home. They're a little bit misshapen. But I think I can try to make these pieces kind of sit nice and then we can go ahead and put some epoxy on there to strengthen it. So I'm going to see what I can do to plastic weld this stuff back together and then we'll put some epoxy and maybe epoxy a plate on the outside and then we'll drill through it and we can bolt this and have this be sturdy because I don't want it to rattle because it's, it's probably going to rattle. So I wish you guys could have seen it but I swear this thing is magic. This little Chicago pneumatic harbor freight plastic welder it's pretty sweet it's got like a little triangular tip on it you could just kind of smooth everything out so I fix that crack right here I reattach this and I reattach that and I mean guys like this is watch it'll probably break when I'm doing this but like look how flimsy this side stuff is how thin it is um, and like I, I don't know I don't really see a need to epoxy anything on there I think both of these are wicked strong now and they're just as strong as the rest of the carrier so uh i see no problem with just bolting it right to that i think i fixed it so it's pretty sweet guys go get a plastic welder if you don't have one pretty sweet tool not expensive you're just melting plastic you could literally use like a soldering iron but it's nice to have this spatula tool and it comes with some extra plastic so you can melt on there and just add a little bit in the gap areas but man did that come out nice i'm really excited that's pretty sweet. So, yeah, we fixed that. Good. Another thing fixed. This thing's going to be so much nicer than it was. So I just had a little rainstorm come on, and I was like, ugh. Right in the middle of me getting some work done. Friday night. Just want to get home and work on my car. You know, this is what I think about. I'm excited to go home and make some progress on it, you know. And it starts raining, so I'm really pissed. I'm like, ugh, this sucks. And then I come back, the car's full of water. I'm like, oh my god, where did this come in? This side never leaked before. I had the door closed normally, <laughs> as it's dripping in the car right now. Um, this side with the door fully closed didn't leak, but I left the door half shut because I didn't think it was going to be that much rain, and I thought it was that. But it turns out that I was inside. I saw it leaking from the, the block inside, and I was like, why is that happening? So I come out here. And the water's pulling up in here because this drain is clogged down here for the cowl. You guys probably can't see a thing, but uh, basically it was dripping on top of the master for the clutch. It still is. So I got to look into that and try to seal it up. I don't know if it's coming in. I think it might be coming in the master for the clutch where it goes to the firewall and uh, leaking internally on top of the block because it doesn't look like it's making its way off of there and into the block from there. And it's dripping right at the bottom of the block. So wherever it's coming in from all those wires, we have water coming in on the floor. 
So I was cursing the rain, but it kind of cued me into a leak that I have to address. So I'm going to pull all this cowl panel apart soon and see if I can clean all the garbage out of there, all the trash and pollen. Um, there's probably a ton of crap in there. And we'll pull this hose off. We'll pull the battery because we got to change the battery anyway. And we'll see if we can clear out that drain for the cowl on that side. And there may be one on the other side that I should look at too. I think I already did. It's like a big wide drain. So, yeah. Got to try to work on that. So, fun stuff. But we'll get there little by little. I'm glad I didn't put the whole interior back together. Um, because then it would have been a wet carpet. So, I had a little wet jute. I ripped the bottom layer out of the uh, heat wave that I had down there. Because it got wet. But, yeah. Hopefully we don't get much wetness. You know? That would be ideal. I don't want this uh, new underlayment to get wet. That's the whole point. So, forgot to put the vents before I threw the IP carrier in. So I'm going to throw this vent on there. This little defroster. Hook it up to this little accordion. Which I'm pretty sure that's where it goes. And then, um, I'll hook it up on the other side. I got a, a vent on there. So, yeah, just little by little. I'm going to hook up. These are the defrost ones. Those little tubes. And then the rest of these, the, the carrier kind of just goes on top of that. So we did as best we could cleaning. I know it's like, it looks dusty in there, so. Um, but we'll see if we can spruce it up a little more. Once we get it all back together, I'd like to go over the interior panels with some tough stuff and gotta do the door jams and things like that. So we'll still have some detailing to do. And we still have the rear to put together. So we still have a lot of work on this car. I'm gonna try to get a big amount done this weekend though. I'm really gonna put in some work on it and try to get some, uh, some attention uh, here. So I think I may close this video out pretty soon, so we'll see what else I get done in this video. So I just got done hitting all this stuff. Tough stuff, my little detail brush, and then the steamer. And it came out really good. The steamer just blows all the crap right out of the plastic. You can see all the stuff running out, especially the white letters on the Corvette stuff. And uh, I found this box of Noiko, so I ran out of the nice sound skin stuff, but I had some of this sitting in the attic, so might as well use it. Um, I don't know when the next time I'm going to do a sound system build is. So I figured I got the whole car apart. Let's try to make it a little bit more comfortable to ride in. Less rattly. So I went ahead and put a couple of those tin pieces on the uh, floor pan here. And I did the rear section of the car too. So not really adding that much weight I don't think. Proportional to hopefully how nice it is inside the car. So you got factory sound deadening here where the tires are so they were trying to dampen something that feels pretty good but you can see the any screws on there vibrating but the, the resonance in the panel you can tell it's deeper because the panel's heavier so it's gonna have a harder time vibrating um, with vibrations and stuff like that so just hit the big panels um, I did the sides the bottom the back and nothing underneath the speakers because I figured that was sealed off. Although I could probably benefit from that, but it's not a sound system build. Not trying to add too much weight. I'm just trying to take out a lot of the panel resonance and annoying vibrations that I may get, especially with if I go with some kind of loud exhaust on this thing. I know the drone is pretty bad, so hopefully this will help with that. If I do get a loud exhaust, it won't drone in the cab or vibrate the whole vehicle. Um, I say cab like it's a truck. Um, but yeah, so we got some of that uh, aluminum stuff. Now I'm going to try to get some Home Depot jute for the rear. I'm not going to put heat wave in the back. Um, just going to put regular stuff. The heat wave's great for the firewall. And my stuff got wet last night, so I'm just kind of working on drying it. Uh, it leaks when it rains. I got to get the weather strips, but the car is not, doesn't have a clear path to registration yet. So I'm a little concerned. I don't want to spend all this money and not register the car so I'm kind of waiting on that to buy the weather strips because they're like almost 500 bucks so we'll see how that pans out I know the car is going to need it so should just buy it um, but anyway going to just keep plugging along here and uh, in the next video you guys will probably see some more progress but this is it I think for the sound deadening and dampening thank you thankful for uh, sound skins and the products they have pretty awesome stuff and uh, <laughs> when I have them lying around I love using it and the heat wave was perfect for this um, so next next project we do we're gonna get some more sound skin stuff going on and uh, yeah go check them out guys and hopefully we 
can really get this thing going soon. We got the BCM in there, uh, IP carriers in there. Now the sun's kind of glaring at you, but we got some wires poking through. I got to try to route some stuff, um, cluster wires, and just find out where things go and uh, jam some stuff through some different panels here. Make sure everything comes out of the right hole so we can plug everything in when we need to. Um, so I'm going to work on that now and uh, piecing together some of the dash here because it's, it's looking good. It's really coming together. Yep, so that's good there. And then under the hood, we got the uh, box on. So I've been meaning to show you guys that stuff here. So just trying not to spill coolant everywhere, but I'll get this jug out of the way. Yeah, so I just got to hook up the AC lines and the heater core lines and put a lot of this stuff back together here along with the blower motor, which I got to figure out a nice new gasket for. And we'll be all set out here. So big progress. Just got to keep keep working. So I'll touch base with you guys in the next video. Thank you for all for watching and we'll see you in the next one.